I know that I always had fun with the things that I was doing. We were doing things that had academic aspects to them, but I never felt like I was just doing work because all the activities were so hands-on and you were building things and playing with things and manipulating materials. So I knew that I was learning, but I was having a good time doing it. It's easier to do things with things that you could feel and you could see than having to do everything in your head. As a preschooler, it's definitely choice-oriented. It was fun to be able to go and choose works off the shelf, you know, whether it's something to do with geometry, they had rectangular prisms to work with, or fine motor skills with the art shelf, or everyday living where you could practice pouring, and you don't know necessarily that you're learning things. There were just lots of very engaging activities to take part in, and it's fun. I think it just comes from the Montessori teaching of follow the child and the whole community aspect as like we all obtain success together. My mom and dad are always saying how they wish they had learned like I did. They really like the part where you could progress at your own pace, the hands-on learning, because they said what they got, they got a chalkboard and he's chalk. It doesn't take long to realize a Montessori classroom is different from most other classrooms. The children are actively engaged, working independently. A closer look reveals each child is involved in working with hands-on materials that stimulate all of his or her senses. Materials that communicate complex concepts in a concrete way. Montessori materials are carefully sequenced so that each activity has an orderly and logical process to follow. This allows children to organize their thinking and problem-solving skills in a clear way and to absorb this knowledge through their senses. All the materials in a Montessori classroom are organized into one of five curriculum areas. Practical life, sensorial, language, math, and cultural. I'd have a little rug on the floor and I'd go get my math assignment and bring it to the rug and when I was done I'd clean it up and put it back or if I wanted to go eat snack I'd go to the sink and wash my hands and get my snack and then brush my teeth and it wasn't just sitting in a class learning it was functioning and learning how to function as a grown-up person not just a three-year-old. Small children have many life skills that they need to learn to achieve independence. Respecting a child's desire to be independent is a cornerstone of Montessori philosophy. Children develop a sense of pride when they're able to do things for themselves. Part of becoming independent learners is taking responsibility for themselves and the classroom environment. Each child learns to take responsibility for their own belongings and to master the skills of taking care of him or herself. Children also feel secure in the knowledge that they can find the materials they wish to work with neatly stored in a particular spot in the classroom. They are, in turn, responsible to put the materials back where they found them and to clean up after themselves. If another child is using the materials a child is interested in, he or she learns to wait patiently, respecting the rights of others. In Montessori, they have works like that test the senses. Like there was this one that it had a little dropper and one liquid was like sour, one was sweet, one was bitter. I loved it. Maria Montessori was one of the first educators to recognize that children learn best when they are engaged in hands-on activities. She believed that children need to move freely in their environment and to investigate whatever interests them. For these reasons, Montessori insisted that the classroom be beautiful. Through this freedom, the child becomes more comfortable taking the time to contemplate all aspects of an activity, the feel, the visual appearance, the sound of the materials, even the smell. 
This curiosity to explore the sensual world around them is part of what makes learning fun. The children enjoy the process over the product. Children often take advantage of their freedom to self-correct by experimenting with all the different ways to do a single activity, satisfying their curiosity about what works and doesn't work and why. I remember learning the noun is the big black triangle, a noun is a person, place, or thing. The verb, which is the big red ball, you go out and play with a big red ball so you know a verb is an action word. Obviously now when I'm saying like, oh, that's a verb or that's a noun, I don't need to think that's a big red ball. But having those associations when I was younger helped me to be able to distinguish different parts of speech as I grew up and now being able to write, you know, fluidly. Young children have a natural ability to learn language skills that diminishes as they grow older. Emphasis is placed on learning the sounds each letter makes, rather than the alphabet. Throughout the curriculum, children are developing the small motor skills they will need to be a successful writer and the auditory and visual tracking skills necessary for learning to read. Objects and images are used to begin the association between beginning sounds and names. The child learns that snake begins with a s sound, that bird begins with a p sound, or that girl begins with a k sound, and so on. Children develop a readiness to grasp abstract concepts at different ages. Montessori teachers follow the child's own sense of what they're ready to learn. In their primary role as observers of the child's progress, they present materials when the child is ready to take on new work. I think it helped me understand what a number means. We always knew each bead equals one, one number. So the beads of 10 would consist of 10 beads and they would be a very specific color and those kind of helped you commit them to memory. Most adults who were taught in traditional educational settings are fascinated by the power of the Montessori math curriculum. As the child becomes more comfortable with each material, the concept of numbers becomes more and more abstract. Like the language curriculum, when the abstract symbols